In this time of desperation When all we know is doubt and fear There is only one foundation We believe We believe In this broken generation When all is dark you help us see There is only one salvation We believe We believe Just declare our faith We believe in God the Father, we believe in Jesus Christ, we believe in the Holy Spirit, and it's given us new life. We believe in the crucifixion, we believe that He conquered death, we believe in the resurrection, and it's coming back again. We believe. So let our faith be more than anything Greater than the songs we sing And in our weakness and temptations We believe We believe Father, we believe in Jesus Christ, we believe in the Holy Spirit, and it's given us new life. We believe in the crucifixion, we believe that He conquered death, we believe in the resurrection, and it's coming back again. Let a lost be found and the dead be raised in the here and now. Let love invade, let the church and live loud. Our God will say, We we'll believe, we we'll believe. And the gates of hell will not prevail, for the power of God has torn a veil. And we know your love will never fail. We believe, we believe, we believe. Father, we believe in Jesus Christ, we believe in the Holy Spirit, and it's given us new life. We believe in the crucifixion, we believe that He conquered death, we believe in the resurrection, and it's coming back. How we believe, we believe in God the Father. We believe in Jesus Christ, we believe in the Holy Spirit, and it's given us new life. We believe in the crucifixion, we believe that He conquered death, we believe in the resurrection, and it's coming back again to declare, we believe in God the Father. We believe in Jesus Christ, we believe in the Holy Spirit, and it's given us new life. We believe in the crucifixion, we believe that He conquered death. We believe in the resurrection, and it's coming back again, we believe. Yes, God, we believe, we believe, amen. Hey, everyone, let me make sure it's a pastor, all you is right here is at church, and I'm so excited, we're going to go.
And uh, you muggle you. Uh, Did you say Street. you're the pastor at Henderson General Baptist Church? Yeah. <laughs> right? they, it's fine. Who am I? <coughs> I'm Dad Hensley. Yeah. yeah. So I've been uh, I've been demoted. So, birds. We're gonna do way way birds. Uh, it's just just a way to make sure I didn't put a pastor and how you the hurt saying. Yeah, and Henderson General Baptist Church. Right. Yeah, we don't know uh, because. But it's so this church is Saturday. The church Saturday is about to Okay. And so what are we talking about tonight? Yeah. The Bible? Yeah, I know the Bible. The Bible? Yeah. Okay. So, well, can, for us tonight, uh, as you are here, uh, mm -hmm. that song is amazing. I'm so thankful for Evan and what he has uh, meant for my ministry uh, over this past year plus uh, now and what he continues to do uh, for our church, what he does for me uh, as a pastor. And, uh, and I look at what we're going to talk about tonight is Hebrews chapter 12. This is a great chapter in the Bible. But before we do that and before Mitchell prays, I want to remind you of the discipleship call for your life. This discipleship call for your life is vitally important uh, for as you are watching this if you're watching it being premiered then it's it's Wednesday but maybe you watch it on Thursday or Friday you watch it at a different time and and it's so easy to forget about the discipleship call here it is again I want to remind you that that Hebrews chapter 11 verses 1 and 6 those are the verses I want you to read every day this week but I want you to identify your truest focus by now you should have seen what your truest focus is if you've taken this seriously. If you haven't taken it seriously, then I hope that you will tonight after this, this time of devotion, this study, and, and look at it and say, what is your truest focus? What, honestly, what is your greatest focus? And then what is your distraction? Identify those things. Identify the struggles within uh, and then write them down. See, you don't write them down immediately. You start focusing and thinking, God, is this really my truest focus? And if it is, then what is trying to distract me from that? What struggle keeps me from following after that? Uh, and then start getting to the place that you can write it down because on Sunday we're going to start seeing again, uh, continuing on uh, with what we're talking about, real focus even with distractions everywhere. So on Sunday, it's going to be about looking forward. This, this eternal foundations that are there, and, and you're going to see that coming Sunday. So I hope you will join us uh, Sunday, 845 uh, for the online, uh, 10 a.m. for the in-person. Uh, so Mitchell, if you would, lead us in prayer uh, at this time, and then we're going to sail right through Hebrews chapter 12, uh, and and we're going to talk about some chastisement, some discipline yeah. that God wants to... you ever get in trouble? No. No? Okay, then there you go. Go ahead. Let's pray, Mitchell. Step up here a little closer to the mic. Yeah. I know I mean, they use that um, for... You know, the Mitchell Bible study... That it's just hard to say, it's, it's so incredible and lead to my heart, source, and be. Make sure when you're trying to process, and my heart, source, that you can process, and when I'm trying to say your words, about the gifts from pray, and you know that, you know, there's all missing in praise. Anyway, pray, amen. Amen. So we're going to look at mm -hmm. chapter 12 of Hebrews. This is a great chapter uh, in the Bible. On Sunday, if yeah. you missed that sermon on Sunday, I hope you will go back. Uh, it's on YouTube. It's on the Facebook page. Uh, you can find it either way. Uh, to go back, please listen to that sermon. Okay. It's important. 
So we're going to take the first four verses and we're going to fly right past, past them. I could spend so much time, but see, we're going, we talked about it Sunday morning. We're going to talk about it again this Sunday morning, these first four verses and how they connect with chapter 11. Uh, and we're going to do that throughout this month. So at this point, we're going to read through it, but then we're going to, to go on down to the rest of the chapter. Mm-hmm. Uh, is that okay with you, Mitchell? Yeah, 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 you read that. Yeah, so we're just going to read right through it. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, mm-hmm. let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up. And let us run with endurance the race God has set before us. We do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith. Because of the joy awaiting him, he endured the cross, disregarding its shame. Now he is seated in the place of honor beside God's throne. Think of all the hostility he endured from sinful people. Then you won't become weary and give up. After all, you have not yet given your lives in your struggle against sin. So, Mitchell, know that I didn't spend any time, and that's hard for me not to talk about these verses because they're so vitally important. Uh, But we're going to, we talked about them last Sunday. We're going to talk about them again this Sunday. Uh, So it's going to be in there. Uh, Please uh, make sure to join us on that. Is that fair? So I can keep going forward? All right, let's do it. Verse 5. And have you forgotten the encouraging words God spoke to you as his children? He said, My child, don't make light of the Lord's discipline, and don't give up when he corrects you. One of the scariest things that I think about in life are not people who come that say God is disciplining me, God is chastising me god is getting on to me those are not the ones that are scary what is scary is are those who never feel or never know about the presence of god in their life and they never feel that chastisement they don't feel that discipline (laughs) see it's important to know that sometimes we're going to get in trouble i get in trouble no i don't get in trouble no do you get in trouble no does bradley get in trouble no does grace get in trouble no (laughs) he's going saying no Uh, now you just flat you do god is a holier oh they're not getting in trouble with god i don't know oh okay i see what you're saying here's what i want you to think about how is it that god has corrected you this week in your walk I mean, really, think about it. If God is your focus, if the focus of your life is the Bible, mm. when we read the Bible, there should be those moments that we, that we see and we understand that, that Scripture tells us, Mitchell, that light went out. Do you want to go get the other light? Uh, yeah. Yeah, go get that other light. Right. Yeah, go to it. So what we see is, is that Scripture tells us that God wants to correct us, but if you're never living a life that that you actually see that he is indeed correcting you, then, then what's happening? We have to slow down as Christians and realize that in the moments that we see and we read scripture, it's not just there for us to pass by aimlessly. It is about us slowing down and hearing what God's Word says. So as we hear this, it corrects us and it moves us. So Mitchell, if you would, set that down right there, and then you come back up here and you talk for a quick second, okay? <clears throat> Got it. Well, yeah, I mean, right now, maybe you know, <clears throat> be a similar now, guys. And I believe what the Bible said, <clears throat> be... By the gospel of the church, and then the twelve by the verse says, My God, verse five, it is verse five. But only when you try to empower God, but it's just probably no but God's is power. Over just a little more, there you go. His power is his name because he God's power in my heart is yours. So, I'm gonna know. But I think I'm gonna for the rabbit, I'm gonna for my show, I'm gonna be for him rabbit with the rabbit show. Okay. And it's it's not even if you want to. 
Besides, with me, but I'm gonna tell me what do. Besides, you know, guys, the song of King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And he is King standing. of Kings and Lord of Lords, yeah. isn't he? Yeah, he does. And, and the reality yeah. is, for my life, nobody wants to hear that you're wrong <clears throat> about something. But who better to hear that you're wrong uh, about something in life than from God? To understand this and to see this, that he threw the stars into the universe and we got this great expanse of billions upon billions upon billions of galaxies with billions and billions of stars in these galaxies. And we look at this and we see all of this happening. And within all of that, we have a God who cares for you. He he loves you he loves you so much the bible says don't make light of this correction but i wanted to slow down just for a moment before we we speed back up because ultimately some of us we never hear the correction of god we think i'm perfect i have no problems there are often times on my on my morning walks that i go and i'm listening to a song and 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 listening and worshiping god that god says are you doing this right in your life you know, this spiritual journey, this spiritual uh, checkup, if you will, this moment that says you need to change your attitude about this. You need to change this about your life. When we yeah. read Scripture, it gives us that ability to hear God speaking to us. That moment that I get mad when I see this, he said, don't make light of this. Use it. Don't give up when he corrects you. He's trying to help you. Why would he do that? For the Lord disciplines those he loves, and he punishes each one he accepts as his child. See, my kids do in fact get in trouble. Mitchell, not so much, as much as the rest. But there are times that you get you get in trouble, and we have to apologize to each other, don't we? No. Yeah, he's saying no. no. He's on no I now. Say no. You do get in trouble from time to time. Well, I don't know uh, but not no. often anymore. No. And, Okay. Look, me and Joey did it all while we did it. Bradley did it. So when we look at this, you get in trouble, I get in trouble, but sometimes we miss out on the, the presence of God in our life to, to change what he wants us to see. As you endure this divine discipline, remember that God is treating you as his own children. Whoever heard of a child who is never disciplined by its father... If God doesn't discipline you as his, he does all of his children, it means that you are illegitimate and are not really the, his children at all. See, for you today, for me today, it is important yeah. to see the reality that God loves you. And if he loves you, it means you're going to get in trouble sometime. Yes, a 50-year-old man who's gone to seminary, gone to church all his life, I'm going to get in trouble by God. Why? Because I'm a human being and I'm his child. You think that's funny that I'm getting in trouble? Is it? Is it? Yeah. Since we respected our earthly fathers who disciplined us, shouldn't we submit even more to the discipline of the father of our spirits? and live forever and even more shouldn't we submit even more shouldn't we submit even more how much are you submitting to god in your life yeah it's important this is an important chapter because we read through it and we don't see that and we don't really con contemplate the the reality of what has god had to get on to you about lately See, for many people, they don't know God is speaking to them because they're not reading His Scripture. They're not, they're not attending to His voice. They're not hearing that still, small voice. They're not asking the question, am I living a right life? Hmm. Has someone come into your life and said, this isn't a godly behavior and you just get mad? But in fact, they were correct and maybe that was God working through them to help you? Much like this Bible study, much like church, whenever I speak, it's not my words. I don't know what people are doing. I don't know how you're living your life every day by yourself within your family. I don't see all those things. And yet God is saying, I want to transform your life. And to do that, you're my child. I love you. I'm not going to let you keep doing the wrong thing. 
Yeah, this is what it is. And we should submit to God. Do you know what submit means? Yeah, I mean, but it's God. Yes, you obey God, right? You listen yeah. to and follow His instructions. <laughs> no, for no, our no. earthly fathers disciplined us for a few years. <laughs> what do you want to say? Me, 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 so bad. It's talking with God. Said, yeah, but this is talking about point. God. I'm not, y'all are not in trouble. I'm just the one who's only trying to point. Because oh, you're trying to make a point? <laughs> yeah, it's just something that we do it's always. But it comes to what we do. Why are we talking about joy? You can start by it. You kill God so bury in church and you start with full of power. And it's God did make a sacrifice, didn't he? Yeah. Yes. It's not all. So the Bible goes on in verse 10 and says, For our earthly fathers disciplined us for a few years, doing the best they knew how. But God's discipline is always good for us so that we might share in his holiness. How are you sharing in the holiness of God? See, these are important questions that you can go back and watch again or you can jot them down and, and ask these questions as you read this chapter. How are you sharing in the holiness of God? How is the discipline of God helping you to get more and become more like His Son? See, for me, I understand that I am His yeah. child. I am 100% yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, God's child because of what He did on the cross, what Jesus did on the cross, and I see that. So this discipline in my life that I find from Him, it's exciting to know, wait a minute, I can get better. See, for a lot of people, they don't think they can get better. They think they've already reached the pinnacle of their life. They think they've reached the pinnacle of their holiness, like, like they've, already, they've already peaked, and, and that's not the case. If there's breath in you, then there's growth that still needs to happen. God still wants to keep pulling you up and moving you forward so you can be a special child of God to go help others. So it's about your holiness. This is an amazing chapter. Yeah. No discipline is enjoyable while it is happening. It's painful. But afterward, there will be a peaceful harvest of right living for those who are trained in this way. I want you to know, huh? there's not one time that I ever want to hear God say you were wrong. But let's be honest about it. If God says you're wrong, you're wrong. If the Bible says what you're doing is wrong, uh. you're wrong. There is no negotiating with him. I mean, sometimes my children want to start negotiating with me when I say they're in trouble and they've done something. And I'm like, what is the negotiation yeah. about? And what is the negotiation about? There's no negotiating. Ghost? There's no negotiating with God. If God says something, this is what he means. And the Bible is clear throughout. <laughs> but we try to muddy it up. Yeah. So for you, what discipline is God trying to talk to you about? What is going on in your life that is not as holy as he wants it to be? The Bible goes on and says, so take a new grip with your tired hands and strengthen your weak knees. Mark out a straight path for your feet so that those who are weak and lame will not fall but become yeah. strong. Are you strong, Mitchell? Yeah. How strong? You stronger than me? Yeah, you're too strong. You're too strong. He is too strong. Yeah. Still, still. But this new grip is too important. Strong. Do you get a new grip? Yeah. A new grip. You have a new grip? Nobody wants to do new things. They don't want to see change. Everybody wants things to go back the way they were. Everybody wants things. I want that. I don't want change. It's painful to go through change. But God's word tells us it's time to take a new grip. What is the new grip in your life? I know I'm filling this up with a lot of questions. This is a huge chapter, and, and I could spend actually the whole month talking yeah. about this chapter. But we're not going to. So I'm giving you these questions to say, how, how are you being disciplined? How are you being chastised? How are you growing closer to God in and through the circumstances? How is it that you're taking a new grip to say, I've gotten tired and I, I want to redo this. I want to be reinvigorated. I want to be revived, if you will. Work at living in peace with everyone and work at living a holy life. For those who are not holy will not see the Lord. This holy living, 
For me, it's work. And it's because I'm a human being in need of a Savior. And for us today, as we look at this and we understand this and we see this, we have to work at living at peace with people within our own house. But then outside that, and how do we live at peace with other people? And beyond that, you have to work at living a holy life. Can you write down what you're doing on a consistent basis that is leading you to a better life with God, a better relationship? Mm -hmm. As we move forward and we quickly go, because oh, yeah. we're going to get through the whole thing. Not Look sure. after each other so that none of you fails to receive the grace of God. Watch out that no poisonous root of bitterness grows up to trouble you, corrupting many. I mean, this chapter is so full. Yeah. I, I'm, yeah. I'm struggling so to say bitter. I want to go through the rest of this because <laughs> you got to slow down and you can't slow down uh, or this thing will go on forever. Uh, but there's points in our life that, that we have to look and say, how am I looking after each other? How are you looking after your family? How are you looking after other people in your life? Have you let some seed of bitterness start taking root and spreading? Bitterness is a horrible, horrible thing. Yeah. The Bible says, make sure that no one is immoral or godless like Esau, who traded his birthright uh, as the first son for a single meal. You know that afterward, when he wanted his father's blessing, he was rejected. It was too late for repentance, even though he begged with bitter tears. You have not come to a physical mountain, to a place of flaming fire, fire, darkness, gloom, and whirlwind, as the Israelites did at Mount Sinai. For they heard an awesome trumpet blast and a voice so terrible that they begged God to stop speaking. Yeah, it's fine when you. It's, we don't want God say. We don't ever want to tell God to stop speaking, do we? Yeah. We want God to speak all the time, do we not? Yeah, so I was saying yeah. that, no, it's the only way I got to say, that Mitchell Robert is still in God's pony, it's suicide. Right, they maybe. staggered back under God's command. If even an animal touches the mountain, it must be stoned to death. Moses himself was so frightened at the sight that he said, I'm terrified and trembling. No, you have come to Mount Zion, to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to countless thousands of angels in a joyful gathering. You have come to the assembly of God's firstborn children. Those names are written in heaven. You have come to God himself, who is the judge over all things. You have come to the spirits of the righteous ones in heaven, who have now been made perfect you have come to jesus the one who mediates the new covenant between god and people <laughs> and to the sprinkled blood which speaks of forgiveness instead of crying out for vengeance vengeance like the blood of abel see for you for me for mitchell for my family for our church family we've come to the saving knowledge of jesus christ he is our everything. And because of that, He is our mediator between us and God. And that's how our relationship is reconciled to God. And for us today, as we look at this and we think about this, we finish this chapter up, Mitchell. Yeah. All right, let's finish it. Be yeah. careful that you do not refuse to listen to the one who is speaking. He's not talking about me. He's talking about God. God wants to speak to you. Swift. And oftentimes we miss and, and don't hear the discipline that God is giving. We don't go towards His holiness and we don't hear His voice anymore because of the distractions of life. So for you today, for me today, for Mitchell today, for all of us that are watching right now, be careful to not refuse to Him. Refuse to listen to him. 
For if the people of Israel did not escape when they refused to listen to Moses, the earthly messenger, we will certainly not escape if we reject the one who speaks to us from heaven. When God spoke from Mount Sinai, his voice shook the earth. But now he makes another promise. Once again, I will shake not only the earth, but the heavens also. This means that all of creation will be shaken and removed so that the only unshakable things will remain. Since we are receiving a kingdom that is unshakable, let us be thankful and please God by worshiping Him with holy fear and awe. For our God is a devouring fire. How is your awe of God? How is your holy fear of God today? These are questions to contemplate. These are questions to sit down and ponder and think about for your life and my life. This is not a Bible study that can just be shut off in my mind. It is something that's got to keep going on and on. You have to answer these questions. It is vitally important for you to hear the voice of God and not let him be shut up in your life. Hmm. So for you, for me, for Mitchell, I want you to know a couple of things. First, you are loved and you are valued. God has a purpose and a plan for your life. I know that was probably four or five things right there quick, wasn't it, Mitchell? So Mitchell, I want you to dismiss us in prayer. I hope that you will take seriously these questions You have written something down. Somebody wrote something down. I hope that you will hear the voice of God this week and you will go back over these verses and see how serious God is about you. He loves you. You are his cherished child and he disciplines those he loves. Listen to his voice tonight. Listen to his voice and follow after him. So, Mitchell, if you would, dismiss us in prayer. Yeah. Yeah, sure did. Yep, go ahead and pray. All right. <coughs> Lord, I thank you, Lord, that I have listened about. Probably no one is going to make sure that I was sorry about the um, Lord, uh, it's friend that, um, Lord, that is to make sure that I was sorry you had him. Amen. We look forward to seeing you Sunday morning, 845 online, 10 a.m. in person. We're going to continue growing in the Lord and working through real focus, even in the midst of all the distractions everywhere. So tell them bye. Everything. But it's storm of God's head. But... So why we wish him to make sure that but God said God said what? God said we're gonna throw the password. Okay. All right. All right. See ya.